still flying now. Spedica, and we are consistently doing between seven and a half and eight knots. Can you check this out? Well, Lisa found her hand, front lowering down her Spedica. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, that's bad. Once you're in Bruce Boot, Bruce Boot, because once you're in Bruce Boot, what's the first part? Bruce Boot. Because once you're in Bruce Boot, ah, this is doing it like a fight. All right guys, so let me try to explain what that means to me. I have spent a good part of my life working on the oil rigs in the North Sea between Scotland, the Shetlands and Norway. During that time I have seen the seas change from calm to storm over and over again. For many years I stood by while it happened and it has been the most spectacular and also scariest presentation of the power of the sea. The point is, the great North Sea has left an image on my mind. Back in those days, I used to watch the mighty waves and winds and wonder what could a boat do if caught in a storm like that. fears now came into mind too. You see, due to the good modern weather forecast, you could avoid most of the nasty bits, but there are a few things that you just can't avoid. The huge Elbe River throws sand all over the area of the Frigian Islands and those depths are constantly changing. The tides over there are some of the greatest I've heard of. The rip tides between the islands is huge. Currents go easily up to 7 knots or more. That means we could go full speed forwards and still go backwards. Getting grounded in one of those remote sandbanks over there is almost surely disaster. Also, that area is busy. I mean, really busy. In a few miles, you will sail past oil rigs, radar towers, wind farms, fishing boats, tugboats, cargo ships, ferries, pipeline ships, cable lane ships, and I'm not even exaggerating, we did sail past all of that. Why are you so nervous? There's three boats over here and they're gigantic. Gigantic? The little person is in the middle of them. There's a gigantic boat over there. There's another here. There's another one over there. And now we're trying to sort it out because in a few hours, without any sleep, oh. we might just be leaving to one of the biggest crosses of our lives. Let's stock up, let's pile up our food. So you understand now why we made such a huge deal out of it. Our plan was to escape the Elbe river mouth as soon as possible, but it would be a long time before the Elbe let go of us. We left in the middle of the night. It was one o'clock in the morning. That was a bad idea, because we sailed exactly into the channel with no time to spare. Huge ships just a few meters from us, rushing past 15 knots, and as soon as the tide changed, the waves got big. Do you want to say something? Really? Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm pretty nervous about crossing this in the middle of the night into the North Sea. Very scary to leave at night. Very scary. Yeah. There's too many boats hanging around. That is, uh, where's your headlight? Kawana would drop between the troughs and make a huge explosion when doing so. It was scary. It's uh, 3 in the morning. We left uh, the shop now but at 1 o'clock. It's, uh, it's very rough for us at least. We have been like a roller coaster out here. It's uh, an impressive scenario out here. I don't think I ever hoped for the sun to come up that much. Feels like the sun's never coming out. Let's just hope for the sun now. I 
think it takes a different type of human being to be wanting to do that. We just made it out of the Elba River. It was hectic. The camera couldn't film enough. It was pitch dark. It was hardcore. But uh, I feel like we're much better now. Still pretty mean out here. Very short period waves. Ah, it's mean. Okay, got to turn off. See you guys later. At some point, the waves gave way to the North Atlantic swell, and that was awesome. Kawana started to show what she was made for and began sailing through those waves like she was loving it. Sailing into the night again. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. 9 o'clock almost. 9 o'clock almost. And uh, we've been sailing for how long? For... We left 1 in the morning. 1 in the morning, so do the math. Um, I'm, uh, I haven't got no brains for that anymore. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, mais 9 hours. 12 mais 9. So that is all together 20, 21, hours. 21 hours. And we still got a few hours to go. Another day actually. Another whole 24 hours probably. It's a beautiful sunset. As, as usual around here. As usual. Man, these conditions are so nice compared to what we had this morning. Right? <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. What, was it that was the roughest nasty. ever? Roughest uh, ever. Ever. It was crazy. Crazy weather. We would actually fall into the troughs between the waves. And they were steepening up as we went along because uh, as we, uh, after we left, the uh, wind started to blow against tide. 3 knots of current against 50 knots of tide, uh, 50 knots of wind with 2 meter waves, it's it's not your best <laughs> mix, it was amazing. At night? At night as well, <laughs> in like such a busy traffic lane, there was a million ships everywhere. Eh? The channel was full. Full, full, to the brim. So, we can feel that it's going harder and harder. But we are not going as fast as we're supposed to. I guess the current is too far, it's, it's too strong. But uh, we don't have the, the speed of the wind or the speed of the boat in the water. So we don't know how much is going and how fast we're going on the water. But I'm guessing the current is pretty strong now because it seems like it's blowing really hard. Right, uh, my night shift now. First log entry. It's half one in the morning. We're making good progress. Uh, just made past uh, Vlieland and we are solid eight and a half knots. It's amazing. Obviously, the current is pushing us as well. Um, it's a great sail. Gladys is uh, going to sleep. She did pretty well. She did three and a half, four hours on her shift. Some well needed rest for me. And just carry on. In a few, four or five hours, the sun will be out. It's going to be another day. Alright. That turn in the land was supposed to be bad and wild too. But as we got close, Kaona kept exceeding. We went along. It's 5.30 in the morning, it's still dark. We are crossing from Germany to Holland today. And it's pretty busy here. Soon we were reaching Den Helder. I used to work of that town. Take the chopper there and fly out. Should we stop here? Nah, let's keep going. We'll stop in Amsterdam. It's busy here, we are almost in Amsterdam. I think it's about 50 or 40 nautical miles until we get there. It's pretty dark here. There's a lot of boats because of Amsterdam, of course. We're doing good. We're doing six knots. Chris just finished, finished his shift, so it's gonna be just me for another four hours. Let's see how it goes. Let's hope for the sun to rise. Look who is here. 
6.20 in the morning. The sun is slowly rising. We're doing um, six knots. It's blowing really, really hard. And we still have another 30 nautical miles to go. There's nobody here now. All the big boats, the big ships, they're gone. I'm happy that the sun is rising. It's blowing really hard right now. It's about to start to shift. It's putting a rift on the main sail. How is the weather outside? Beautiful. Is it? <laughs> it's actually quite nice. It's not that cold compared to reefing in Finland. Reefing in Holland sounds better. Yeah. And when Amsterdam arrived, we thought, well, we still have until the end of the day. Let's go to the Hague. Why not? And that is where we fought our rest. Wind died down just as we approached. It was supposed to be. What a trip and what a sail. Very special moment. We just made 1051 nautical miles, crossed the 1000 nau nautical miles barrier having a breakfast after 30 something hours at sea on our way to the Hague, Netherlands then about an hour motor is sailing now for the last hour as the winds die down it's supposed to turn to the east from the west actually that will make it a bit harder what day is today? 22 I don't know what day is today it's been a month and eight days since we left Finland a thousand miles in a month and eight days all right Check this city out. It's alive. People are doing stand-up, man. Look at this. Like the guy doing stand-up battle over there. It's summertime and we reach the summer. Yes. Careful. What you doing? Look at her. She's like she's all dressed up for summer. Another summer. Another summer in Europe. 